This is an incredible story of engineering, ambition and strategic vision. The Qinghai Tibet Railway, also known as the SkyTrain, is one of China's proudest achievements on par with the Great Wall and the Three Gorges Dam. Spanning nearly 2,000 kilometers, this railway traverses some of the most extreme landscapes on Earth, cutting through the Himalayan plateau from Xining in central China to Lhasa in Tibet. Outside the train window, the vast golden grasslands stretch endlessly, meeting the towering peaks of the roof of the world. The desolate beauty of the Tibetan plateau is breathtaking, but it is also a land of brutal survival. If a train were to stop unexpectedly, passengers would be left at the mercy of fierce winds, with no drinkable water and no trees for shelter. The only signs of life are scattered ruins of Mao-era military installations and the skeletal remains of yaks devoured by predators. This railway is more than just a transportation route. It represents centuries of struggle and ambition. The journey to Lhasa, once an unreachable dream for foreign travelers, was first attempted by British explorers like Thomas Manning, who in 1811 became the first Englishman to reach the sacred city. Many others followed in his footsteps, braving attacks by wolves, earthquakes, and treacherous terrain in their attempts to uncover Tibet's secrets. For decades, Lhasa remained an isolated fortress, fiercely protected by the Tibetans. In 1904, the British Raj launched a brutal military expedition led by France's young husband to force open trade with Tibet. Armed with rifles and machine guns, British soldiers faced Tibetan fighters who carried little more than old matchlock guns and images of the Dalai Lama for protection. The battle was over in moments, leaving thousands of Tibetans dead. In the years that followed, Tibet remained cut off from the world. Until 1950, when China's Red Army marched in, claiming to liberate the region. Tibet's long struggle for autonomy ended as thousands, including the Dalai Lama, fled into exile. China tightened its grip, and by 1984, construction began on a railway that would forever alter Tibet's fate. The first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, connecting Xining to Golmud, was completed in 1984. At the time, the journey was slow and unpredictable, with travelers enduring hours of delays and unpredictable terrain. But by 2006, China had achieved the impossible. The second phase of the railway, stretching across 1,200 kilometers of frozen tundra, was completed. Chinese President Hu Jintao hailed it as a miracle in the history of world railways. Building the railway through such extreme conditions was a feat of human ingenuity. The Tibetan Plateau is the world's third pole, with winter temperatures dropping below packs 20 degrees and winds powerful enough to lift a child off the ground. The biggest challenge, however, was the permafrost. Nearly 869,000 square kilometers of frozen earth that transforms into an unstable marshland every summer. To overcome this, engineers constructed more than 14% of the railway on elevated bridges, preventing the tracks from sinking. But despite these precautions, the region remains geologically unstable, with the constant threat of earthquakes and the effects of climate change making the permafrost more unpredictable than ever. When the first train to Lhasa finally departed in 2006, it was a triumph for China. Passengers traveled in state-of-the-art cabins equipped with oxygen regulators to combat altitude sickness. The interiors were adorned with Tibetan carpets and Buddhist motifs, a stark contrast to the cold metallic engineering that made the journey possible. As the train crossed the Tangula Pass at 5,702 meters, the highest railway point in the world, it was clear that China had achieved something extraordinary. The project was not just about connectivity, it was a symbol of power, a strategic move to secure China's western frontier. The Qinghai Tibet Railway was part of China's Go West policy, aimed at boosting economic development in its western provinces. In its early years, the railway delivered on its promise, 
tourism boomed and Lhasa transformed from a remote mountain city into a bustling metropolis. But the growth didn't last. By the time I arrived in Tibet, it was the least developed region in China, with economic disparity still evident. Beyond economic ambitions, the railway served a deeper strategic purpose. Geopolitically, Tibet is crucial. As author Tim Marshall notes, if China didn't control Tibet, chances were that India would try to do so. Just as the US and Russia used railroads to unify their vast territories, China's control over Tibet was cemented with the completion of the SkyTrain. As I gazed out of the train window, the rugged Tibetan landscape unfolded before me, a world untouched by time, where ancient traditions clashed with modern ambitions. The journey to Lhasa was surreal, a blend of history, engineering and politics woven together in a single ride. When I finally stepped off the train, I was met with an unexpected sight, a security checkpoint where all foreign visitors had to register. Freedom in Tibet, it seemed, was just an illusion. Moments later, a cheerful Tibetan guide greeted me, draping a traditional white silk scarf around my neck. Welcome to Lhasa he said, ushering me into a minibus with other tourists. As we drove towards Barkhor, Lhasa's historic center, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey. This railway, built against impossible odds, was more than just an engineering marvel. It was a statement of China's ambition, a testament to human perseverance, and a symbol of the ever-changing world we live in. Thanks for being part of our journey. Like, subscribe and click the bell icon to join us for more exciting content in the future.